welcome to Tales of Honor Podcast, a podcast dedicated to telling the true stories of the Congressional Medal of Honor. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Tales of Honor Podcast. I'm your host, Christoph Ambrose, and today's episode is episode 133. I hope you enjoyed episode 132 with uh, Joe Daniels from the National Medal of Honor Museum. It was a good listen. I uh, really enjoyed my time chatting with him. And uh, we are now back into the swing of things, uh, listening to stories of Medal of Honor recipients. Tonight's episode is being brought to you by the good people over at Combat Flip Flops. They're a veteran-owned apparel company with a mission to create peaceful, forward-thinking opportunities to self-determine entrepreneurs affected by conflict. Look, I know I read this little section every single time, and uh, look, it, it, the meaning doesn't get lost at all. If you're not going over to follow Combat Flip Flops on Facebook inst- and Instagram for um, some awesome content, you are missing out on a lot of good things. They show you what they put your money toward, and uh, awesome, just some great content from them. Uh, Trying to, trying to put some good vibes back out into the world. And if you're not following them and you're wondering what they do, well, it's simple. They, uh, they take the money that you spend with them, and they use that money to help educate Afghan women and girls and removing unexploded landmines and other ordnance in Laos. And they also help support members and the families of the special operations community. Good people, good products, and a great mission. They are helping flip the view on how wars are won Business, not bullets. And now, a tale of honor. Smedley was born on the 30th of July, 1881, in Westchester, Pennsylvania, and was the oldest of three boys. His family had been in the United States since the 1600s, and his parents were from local Quaker families. Smedley's father and grandfather were both congressmen, and his father was also the chair of the House Naval Affairs Committee during both the Harding and Coolidge administrations. While attending the Haverford School, Smedley became the captain of the baseball team and quarterback of the football team. 38 days before his 17th birthday, he left school and enlisted in the Marine Corps during the Spanish-American War. Haverford awarded Smedley his high school diploma before the end of his final year and stated that he had completed the scientific course, quote, with credit. Smedley had lied about his age in order to receive a commission as a second lieutenant and went on to train in Washington, D.C. He soon deployed to Cuba and arrived shortly after its invasion and capture. Smedley and his company returned to the States for a short break and after a four-month assignment on the USS New York, Smedley was supposed to be mustered out of service, but he instead accepted a commission as a first lieutenant. The next assignment was in the Philippines, where there was little to do for Smedley. To relieve boredom, he turned to alcohol, but this had its consequences when he had become so drunk that he was relieved of his command. Nevertheless, Smedley led his first combat action when he took the town of Novaleta, with 300 Marines from the Filipino rebels known as the Insurrectos. His first sergeant was quickly wounded, and Smedley briefly panicked, but quickly led his Marines to pursue the enemy that was fleeing. This led to the rebels being dispersed and the town being taken by noon. Soon after, Smedley had received orders to deploy to Guam with Littleton Waller, who had chosen Smedley and four other officers to go with him. Just before they were to go, Their orders were changed, and they were sent to China instead. During the Battle of Tientsin, on the 13th of July, 1900, Smedley climbed out of a trench to rescue a wounded officer and was then shot in the thigh as well. Since commissioned officers were not eligible for the Medal of Honor at this time, he instead received a brevet promotion two weeks before his 19th birthday to captain while he recovered in the hospital. He later received the newly created Marine Corps Brevet Medal in 1921 for those actions. Once recovered, Smedley would spend time in the Caribbean and Central America, better known as the Banana Wars, and in Honduras and Puerto Rico. He also spent time in Mexico and received his first Medal of Honor for his actions in Veracruz in 1914, but that is a story for another time. The following year, the Haitian president had been assassinated and Smedley was on the USS Connecticut headed to Haiti. 
It was his actions on the 17th of November, 1915, that would earn him the Medal of Honor for the second time. The citation reads, For extraordinary heroism in action as commanding officer of detachments from the 5th, 13th, 23rd Companies and the Marine and Sailor Detachment from the USS Connecticut, Major Butler led the attack on Fort Riviere, Haiti, 17 November, 1915. Following a concentrated drive, several different detachments of Marines gradually closed in on the old French Bastion Fort in an effort to cut off all avenues of retreat for the Keiko bandits. Reaching the fort on the southern side where there was a small opening in the wall, Major Butler gave the signal to attack and Marines from the 15th Company poured through the breach, engaged the Caicos in hand-to-hand combat, took the bastion, and crushed the Keiko resistance. Throughout the perilous action, Major Butler was conspicuous for his bravery and forceful leadership. He would receive the Medal of Honor in 1917, and this made him and Daniel Daly the only two Marines to have ever received the Medal of Honor twice for separate actions. These actions would be the last bit of combat that Smedley would be involved in personally, as he was denied a combat command on the Western Front during World War I. In October of 1918, he was promoted to the rank of Brigadier General and took charge of the massive sanitation problem of Camp Pontainsen in France. Smedley started by hauling a duckboard, which were no longer needed in the trenches of the war, up a four-mile hill in order to provide the men with dry sleeping conditions under their tents. Not only did this earn him the nickname of Old Duckboard, but also the Army and Navy Distinguished Service Medals and the French Order of the Black Star. Smedley went on to command the Marine Barracks at Marine Corps Base in Quantico, Virginia, the Marine Expeditionary Force in China, and became the youngest Major General, which is a two-star general, in Marine Corps history at the age of 48. He also became became the first general officer to be arrested since the Civil War because of publicly speaking gossip about Italian dictator Benito Mussolini. Smedley apologized to the Secretary of the Navy, and his court-martial was canceled. From 1924 to 1926, Smedley served Philadelphia as the Director of Public Safety and Crime, and police corruption did take a serious dive. However, due to his very militant and aggressive tactics, Smedley resigned after a lot of pressure and later stated that cleaning up Philadelphia was worse than any battle that he had ever been in. He went on to run for a Senate seat in 1932, and even though he lost, one of the topics he spoke out about was in regards to a bonus that was due to veterans of the First World War. Many veterans had been out of work since the beginning of the Great Depression, and service certificates were granted to them in 1924. Each certificate was valued at the veterans' promised payment plus compounding interest. The main problem was that these certificates had a 20-year maturity, making them redeemable in 1945. About 43,000 people marched on Washington, D.C. in June of 1932 in protest, and Smedley and his son went and visited the veterans to let them know that they were indeed right to protest and not to do anything that would cost public sympathy. The following day, on the 20th of July, cavalry units were dispatched to the protesters and gas was used to disperse them. When Smedley retired from the Marine Corps, he had purchased a house in Newtown Square, Pennsylvania, and he lived there with his wife until June of 1940. He checked himself into the hospital after being sick for a few weeks, and the illness was described as an incurable condition of the upper gastrointestinal tract. His family stayed with him and even brought his new car so that he could see it from his window. He never got a chance to drive it because on the 21st of June, 1940, Smedley died in the Naval Hospital in Philadelphia. His funeral was held at his house, and to this day, his family maintains the house as it was when he died. Smedley Darlington Butler is buried in the Oakland Cemetery in Westchester, Pennsylvania. Section B, Lot 1. And that was a tale of honor. Thank you so much for listening to Tales of Honor podcast. If you like this podcast, please be sure to leave a nice review, a good rating, and tell a friend. You can see more information on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and at talesofhonorpodcast.com. If you have any questions or comments, you can send them to talesofhonorpodcast at gmail.com. And until next time, I'm Christoph Ambrose. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.